Hi folks, this is Pierre with Pierre Andrews Photography and today I'm going to talk to you about the um, Palsy Buff Einstein 640 watt per second strobe. Um, the main reason why I got this and why I got rid of my Allen Chrome 500 BXRIs was because this thing freezes action like a champ. Um, and uh, I, was, I was only focused on getting this for its action freezing capabilities, but then I came across uh, one, of its, one of its accessories called the uh, Cyber Commander, which can remotely control these, these strobes. And on top of that, everything has a light meter on the back, so I didn't even have to buy a light meter. Um, and this functions better than a light meter if you're using these strobes. Um, I'm going to get, get into the specifics of the, the strobe, talk to you about the LCD screen on the back and how you can control um, everything from your f-stop to your power output to your meter, everything from not only from a convenient LCD display, but more importantly from the Cyber Commander um, transceiver unit. Uh, the other cool thing that makes these cool just an extra plus is how easy um, speed rings are to attach to this thing. There's no, there's no, the locking mechanism is very simple. Spring loaded. It's so easy. Uh, that's a, that's a plus, but not only, not only that, for its price point, it's uh, the same price point as the 500 BXRI. It's unbeatable. If you go to my, one of my previous posts, the ballet uh, post, um, the photo shoot, the ballet photo shoot that I did, I used uh, Profoto Compact 600 strobes, and those couldn't even come close to these. And for the price difference, I mean, those I don't know how much those those uh, were when they came out, at over a thousand dollars, and these are four ninety nine. Um, this little transceiver is what you need to communicate with the uh, with the Cyber Commander, and this unit costs thirty bucks. So all in all, you're looking at five hundred and thirty plus 170 or so for the uh, for the uh, Cyber Commander. And then you pair that with you know your other strobes and you can manage groups, you can manage the strobes independently. I mean, the sky's the limit and I'll show you that in a sec. Check it out. Okay, initially I got the, uh, the Palsy Buff strobes, the Einsteins, to freeze action because uh, like I said, the Ellen Crumbs that I had were too slow. And I also rented Profoto Compact 600s which you know for their price i know that they're an older model but for their price you would think that they would uh that they would freeze action and uh i, I found out that their t1 stop is like 200 and 285 1 over 285 which you know is not enough to freeze anything you can look at the test uh sample images on that blog that i did of my mom waving her hands outside and you can see a bunch of motion blur so I got these strobes for that to fix that problem. Now I'm going to show you how to pair multiple strobes with the Cyber Commander and just show you how easy it is to meter and to adjust settings from the Cyber Commander, which has a hot shoe for you to hook on to your camera. Um, so I'm going to turn on the strobe. The beautiful thing about this is that all you need to, uh, to communicate between the Cyber Commander and your strobes is uh, this CyberSync transceiver right there on top that you hook in. It's got a bunch of pins. So like I said also there's a light meter right here. And so what a good light meter costs about 300 bucks. I bought a Siconic light meter, the uh, the standard L model. I forget which one it was, but it was $300. Uh, and I returned it right away after getting this because this was just as, actually this is more accurate than the Siconic, especially for my needs given the fact that I'm using this with these strobes. And I'll show you how amazing it is. So first, I am going to create, uh, on the back of this settings, all I'm going to do is create a dedicated channel for this strobe. I'm going to set this strobe to channel 1. Okay, let me make sure that's in focus for you guys. Okay, there as you can see this is set to channel 1. Now I'm going to go to this strobe here in the background, I'm, I'm going to set it to channel 2. Okay, and all you have to do, really do to get there to this channel is press the function button until the Channel one is highlighted, and I know it's a little bright. Let me turn it down a little bit. There you go. Now I'm gonna just again press, sorry, press the function button until channel one is highlighted, and you can move it up and down, channel one, channel two. So I'm gonna set this one to channel one. Okay, I'm gonna set this other strobe. They're both gonna be on frequency one. I'm gonna set this strobe over here to channel two, channel two, okay done. 
Now, the important thing too is to set it to the action mode because the action mode again is what really dictates the T1 stop right here. Now the T1 is going to, I mean right now I have it at 160 watts per second and the T1 is 1 over 4,464. That's well enough to freeze, you know, most action. I can't stop a bullet, you know, freeze a bullet, but that's pretty much it. Um, okay, I'm going to do the same thing. Um, set this strobe to action mode which you just press the function button until you get to mode and just change it to action. Okay, now here's the beautiful thing. Once I have them a general settings of what I want on each strobe, I go to my cyber commander, okay? Make sure that's in focus so you can all see. Okay, I go to the cyber commander, I go, I pre I go to menu until I go to this main menu and I want to, oops, I want to open memory, okay? Now, there's a default memory setting that's called Studio. You can see right here, it says Studio. The menu, the, the menu isn't too user friendly, but you get the hang of it after a while. So I'm gonna load this Studio, okay? Now, it automatically pulled in the two strobes right here, on channel one, channel two, because of how I d dedicated them. The blue bars that you notice here are the, um, are the power levels. So channel one, which is uh, right in front of my hand, is uh, the output power is at 160 watts per second, and channel two is set considerably lower. Now I can set, I can group these two together. Um, the easiest way to do that would be to go to menu. I'm going to create a group right here, which says groups. I'm going to do okay. Now I'm going to. Damn it! This is not again. This is this is the only problem with this is that the the uh, buttons aren't user friendly at all at first. So I'm going to go up to group one. I'm going to add channel one. So I'm scrolling down here till I see channel one. Okay, channel one is added, and then I'm going to go to channel two, and I'm going to add it. Okay. So now both channels one and two are on. Um, both channels one and two. Crap. Both channels one and two are on group one. Okay. I'm going to go back to my menu. I'm going to go to the main. This is the main function, and I want to. I don't want to choose both groups yet. What I, the group yet? What I first want to do is meter for this first strobe. So I'm going to move, set this strobe over here, and then I'm going to. Uh, to just take a light, I know I'm out of focus, but I want to just show you. I'm going to stand in front of the strobe on channel one, do a light reading, just press the uh, this right button to meter, it's just this button on the right, and you just hold in front, boom. Okay, now I've got, an, I got a, a reading of F16 and 9 tenths of a stop. You can see that right there at the very top there. Now, let's just say I wanted to shoot at F9, okay? Uh, well, all I need to do is lower, press this button, to lower the output of my strobe until it gets goes down to F9. So as I'm pressing the down button, my F stop is lowering so that I, oh, I'll just stop at F11. I say I want to shoot at F11. And there you go, I'm at F11. So when I take another light reading, boom. I just got blinded there. F11 and 2 tenths of a stop. Okay, I wasn't at the exact same spot, but that gives you an idea of how easily easy it is to control. I could set the strobe outside um, let's just say I'm shooting it through a window. I can sit it outside and manually control everything from the outside without having to go back and forth. Okay, so I'm wanting to shoot at F11. So now I'm going to switch. I've just pressed the left button here and I'm going to switch to channel two. So as you can see, it's really kind of hard to see because it's so small, but this channel now is selected. If I go to the left, channel one selected. If I go to the right, channel two. So now channel two is selected, which controls this strobe here on the left, okay? So I'm gonna take another reading. I know I'm out of focus. Take another reading of this strobe right in the middle. Okay, I'm blinded again. And I get a meter reading of 11.9. So I'm just going to slightly lower the output until I get to F11. Now, relative now now that I am 
Now that the cameras are set, or the strobe, excuse me, are set to f11, I know that if I take a shot, if my subject is right here in the middle, I take a shot at f11, it's going to be perfectly exposed. Let's just say now I um, I want to get more depth of field, okay? Then all I need to do now, here's the beautiful part. All I need to do now is go to my group. So I'm going to keep on. I'm going to go to uh, group one, and now both both of these are selected, and all I have to do is. Lower my, or I'm going to lower my power output, and they're both going to lower at the same time. They're both going to lower at the same time. And then I have to, all I have to do is take a meter reading for both, since they're both selected. And I get a reading of F8, an 8, 8 tenths of a stop right there. So now, if I want to, like I said, let's just say I want to shoot at F4, all I have to do is lower the output of both, because they're both set to a group now, until I get to, I'm going to keep going down with the output until I get to F4. There you go. Now I'm set to F4. I'm going to do another light reading to make sure that's the case. Boom. F4 and one tenth of a stop. So this is amazing because if you want to change your depth of field, there's no, there's no math, there's no having to meter difficult, you know, having to eat, uh, difficulty metering. It's all done from this and you can you know, put this on your camera and you're good to go and you get a nice visual representation. You can have up to 16 channels, you can create as many groups as you want. It's really, it's really customizable, user friendly. Um, and uh, that's it. Be sure to check out my blog at pierreandrews.com. Go to my Facebook page at uh, facebook.com forward slash pierreandrewsphotography. And uh, also subscribe to my YouTube channels um, as I'm going to be posting a lot more uh, videos coming up soon. Thanks so much. Have a good one.